Today I'm taking you behind the scenes of an exclusive space gas training session in Brisbane. We will dive into some incredible structures in the software and stick until the end of the video because I will share key takeaways from this course to help you in your journey as a structural engineer. If you're new here, my name is Gabriel and I'm a structural engineer living and working on the east coast of Australia. And if you find value in this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Now let's get started. I've got a training for space gas. Yes, you're attending? Yes. Yeah, just a little for now and we'll let you know when the instructors are ready. All right, I'm going to show you a couple of structures that we modeled in the course and share some key takeaways that will help structural engineers, even if you're not designing these specific types of structures. All right, so we started with a FEA model of a simple pallet racking cantilever beam, which is commonly seen in storage warehouses. And the key takeaway from this exercise is that you have to be able to, number one, make correct assumptions, and number two, verify these assumptions. In this case, a downward force will create a push and pull in the connecting plate. So there's a tension at the top and a compression at the bottom. The tension force goes through the plate and is resisted by the bolts. So you can see here in the model that we have supports in all nodes around the bolt holes. Well, the compression force is where we make our first assumption. For if you imagine there is a column inside this C plate and the column is stiff enough, I would say it's a decent assumption to restrain these nodes along the bottom edge of the cantilever. So in other words, the column is taking the compression force, right? If for some reason you're not restraining the nodes along the bottom flange of the beam, this plate will deform and the results you will get from this model will be completely different. If I copy this model over here and I delete all the supports along the bottom flange of the beam and run an analysis, you can see that now the deflections are different, the stresses on the plates are in different locations, right? You've got different results because you made different assumptions. I think I'm repeating myself too much here, but my point is that I'm looking at that plate 
in the in the bottom model, and it's deforming too much, right? And that's affecting the deflection of my beam. So that makes me think, well, will that plate deform that much? Probably not, because I've got a column there. So that means the assumption for this model is wrong. So apply this principle to your specific project. Every project you do in a FEA, every, every FEA project that you do, make sure you verify your assumptions. Now, suppose you're doing a grillage model for a slab bridge and you have 500 kilonewtons here on the edge plus another 500 kilonewtons that 1,000 kilonewtons apply to the edge of the bridge. So we made the assumption that we can design this bridge by using a grillage model. Now to verify the results that I'm getting from this model, I need to simplify the system into a structure that I can easily calculate. To do that, nothing better than a simply supported beam. So let's analyze the model and check the results. Okay, so first, the deflection is 19.7 millimeters in one end and 10.27 millimeters on the other end. So 19.7 plus 10.27 divided by two, that's equal to 15 millimeters. If we imagine a beam which is six meters wide and 500 deep, which is the depth of the deck with a 1000 kilonewtons point load. The formula for the deflection in the simply supported beam with a point load in the middle is PL cubed divided by 48 EI, and that is equal to 14.74 millimeters if you plug the numbers into this equation. So 14.74 is very close to 15. Great, I'm happy with this result. Now, we can check the bending moment, right? If we look at the bending moment in this grillage system, the sum of all these bending moments of all longitudinal beam, right? If we, if we add up all these numbers here, it's going to be equal to 2,750 kilonewtons meters. Now, the bending moment formula for a simply supported beam with a point load is PL on 4. You should know this formula off the top of your head. So it's PL on 4, point load, simply supported beam. Okay, so we've got 1,000 kilonewtons, right? 1,000 times 11 meters, which is the span, PL, divided by 4. That is 2,750 kilonewtons meters. Fantastic. Now I'm confident that my model is correct. We also modeled a strip footing loaded by three columns, which is basically a plate with spring supports. And in space guys, if you draw some plate strips, you're able to get results for reinforcement, bearing capacity, shear, bending, and all that good stuff. And all the results that you need to design a strip footing. If you'd like to see a full video showing how to model and design this strip footing, Type strip footing on the comments and if there is enough demand, I'll make a video on that. <laughs>